Hey everyone, this is Debbie Vornhut with Common Sense Landlording. I had a thought. Um, I get a lot of questions on how this works, how the whole Section 8 process works, and what order do you need to do things. And it is important that you know how to approve a Section 8 prospect or applicant. Um, I always say you shouldn't do anything differently with them. You are supposed to treat them exactly like any other applicant. One thing you need to remember, though, is that they're going to have their paperwork and they need to have their paperwork before you ever start down this process. The When I pre-screen, I always ask, do you have your voucher? Is it in your hand? And then the numbers, because if they don't have their voucher, I am not even going to talk to them. I'm not going to let them tour the property and they need to just come back to me when they have their paperwork in their hand and their voucher in their hand and they're ready to actually seriously start looking for a property because once you agree to rent to them and fill out their paperwork, you have to hold that property. So you need to be darn sure this person meets your guidelines. So when you, when someone says that they have a voucher, follow the same process, but make sure that they actually have their voucher and that they have their paperwork and make sure they meet all your requirements. Okay. You need to do all the screening don't fill out their paperwork before you go through this process, because once you do, they're going to turn in their paperwork and then you are going to be required to rent to this person as long as, you know, everything works out and they agree to pay your rent amount and everything. So what this means is you need to do all of your due diligence before you let them hand you that paperwork. And that starts with check the voucher. Is it large enough? If yes, go to step two. If not, they need to go find a different property that costs less. And in some of the other videos, I've talked about the voucher and how to look at the numbers. So I'm not going into that. This is just the process here. The next thing you do is their income three times the rent. Remember, you can only use the portion that they pay. So that's going to require them to go ask their person, their representative, how much is Section 8 going to pay of my rent and how much are Am I going to be required to pay? And if they are required to pay $300, if that's what Section 8 says you have to pay, the tenant has to pay, then your income requirement of three times the rent can only be $900. Once you verify that the voucher covers the rent and they have appropriate income, have them fill out your application. I use the property management system, so they fill out mine online. You can use a paper application. It doesn't matter. Have them fill out an application. Once they give it back to you, review it. Don't just run off and run credit. Make sure that everything is filled out completely, especially on a paper application. If there's anything left blank, oftentimes there's a reason. Sometimes it's just a mistake, but I disqualify people all the time on the application. OK, I'm not going to waste my time and money, their money running their credit if there's something disqualifying on the application. Then you run your credit once you make sure everything looks good on the application. Review the credit score. I have a credit score guideline. I also have credit issues. So, you know, for me, if they have five or more basic bills and collections, that's disqualifying. You know, if they owe a previous landlord, if they have utility bills, things like that, there are things for me that are disqualifying. Okay. And I'm not going to get into all of that, but my point here is have criteria and apply them evenly and fairly across the board, whether it's a section eight tenant, another type of voucher tenant, or just a regular tenant who's going to pay their own way. Same criteria across the board. I have a job requirement except for Section 8, okay, but I thought I'd include, include this since I said treat them exactly the same as everybody. So they have to have income. So job and income. So for a Section 8 person, they have to have the income. And I require them if they get SSI, if they get disability, or if they have a job, whatever their source of income is, they have to prove their income of three times the rent. I also look up the property that they look in and I look up code violations. If, and this is across the board, this isn't just a section eight person. If they have code violations, chances are they're gonna have code violations with you unless maybe it's a landlord issue, kind of depends, but consider that. Check their criminal background. My credit report does that, but I also go out and just look them up online. Check their social media accounts. I do a general Google search. I do a Facebook search. I go out on Instagram. I do all of these searches. And sometimes there are some um, 
some bad things on there. Sometimes there's just some funny things, especially with younger people, but always check that. I one time had a tenant years and years and years ago threatened to uh, kill me. And I started Googling her and it was a mess. She had some kids that were killed. And, and this was, this is a long time ago before this was a thing, but sometimes you can uncover some bad things when you just do a, a general Google search. So always go out and do that social media check. Do a landlord verification. I don't trust them anymore because there's so many of them that have had uh, bad tenants over COVID. And a lot of times they're reluctant to share information with you. So if I can't get a landlord verification, I don't worry too much. I just make sure that I do a home visit and I get a lot of pushback on this. But yes, someone goes and actually physically goes to the property where they live. And we warn them, they knock on the door and they go in and they look at how they live. Because I will tell you this, they will live in your property exactly how they're currently living. And you need to know that. We've dodged hoarders. We've dodged people with more animals than they disclose and all sorts of things. So we actually disqualify several people a year uh, on their home visit. So after you go through this entire process, if they're approved, you meet with them, have them come to you, however you do this, and fill out their Section 8 paperwork. And I always keep a copy of that so that from year to year, I just, when they bring their new paperwork in for their renewal, I go pull out the old paperwork, I fill it out exactly the same with the exception of the rent increase. And that way I have a template for each and every tenant. Because if you don't answer it exactly the same every year, Section 8 will flag it and they'll send it back to you. And it's just too much hassle. Now, if for some reason you turn them down, you need to be sure and send them a denial or adverse action letter, especially if it was because of their rental history, their credit or a criminal background. Those are the three times you have to. Now, if you had multiple applications and this person was turned down simply because you had one house and four people that qualified, you don't need to send this since it, they weren't denied on those other three things. So this is the basic process for approving anyone. And you need to go through these extra few steps with a Section 8 applicant because, again, once you fill out their paperwork, you have to hold that property for them. Now, Section 8 has gotten faster. It usually takes about a week now to get a Section 8 inspection here in Louisville, Kentucky. And again, I usually say this in the beginning and I forgot. Be sure that you know the laws in your local area. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm allowed to do these things. We can do these things here. Some of these things may be against the law in in certain areas of the country. I know that the laws do, do change and in some areas you may not be able to use a credit score. You may not be able to uh, have an income requirement. So know the laws, do not ever implement any kind of system without knowing for sure that you can legally do so. Because I can do this legally here, take me to New York or California and I'd be in all kinds of trouble trying to implement some of these things. So. If you have any questions, let me know. You can check me out on Facebook, uh, Common Sense Landlording. And you can also find me on my website at debbievornholt.com.